Now we are in the meeting room, we are coming slowly. And about the course, because the course is a little bit uh, more or a little bit more complicated. Yeah, I'm not fair enough, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so. Uh, so we can start. Okay. So it seems everyone is um, dialing into the room. I hope you can understand me. And um, I'm very happy that you joined the session today. Um, Professor Puringer will give you a testimonial of our new five single use 5.3. We, we are very happy that you all dialed in from all over the world and um, very excited what Professor Puringer is just going to tell us. So good morning, Professor Puringer. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure for me participating at this world. Congress on Anesthesiology, and uh, um, um, uh, I've been asked by Storz, and I'm happy uh, for this invitation to talk about the new device, the single-use 5.3 um, uh, chip bronchoscope. Uh, well, uh, if you look at my intensive care, pretty busy uh, in these days, as you can imagine, with the fourth wave of COVID-19. So it's, it's definitely important to have single-use devices of high quality, uh, around us and uh, what do we need? And this is really uh, a thing. We need high quality images, uh, especially in those critical patients who need uh, a good uh, bronchial and, and pulmonary treatment. Um, on the one hand side, we, we want durable, reusable products uh, because of teaching and training. And I think this is really, really very important, uh, especially when you're using flexible fibroscopes. You need to do training to get uh, good uh, skills in terms of manual uh, uh, using all those products. And therefore, teaching and training is important. Uh, for these things, I think uh, uh, reusable products are, are very, very important um, due to economical reasons. On the other hand, we, we, we have to have single-use products for infectious uh, patients, um, especially when, when we look at some cases like Kreuzfeld-Jakob, where we, especially in Germany, we are not allowed to reuse uh, reusable products anymore if we have a patient like this. And of course, in, in areas with lack of infrastructure, and this, I do not mean third world countries by that. I mean, as well in, in our regions, uh, when, when there is not sufficient uh, um, uh, hygienic uh, and, and preparation uh, um, facilities around. And of course, which I think is important, we should have all in one systems. That means that we do not need uh, different um, uh, monitors when we are using this or that device. This is why we are uh, we prepared our on our intensive care uh, those um, mobile small trolleys uh, containing of everything. Especially in the intensive care, sometimes you need to have intubation, and after the intubation, immediately some uh, bronchoscopy uh, and and uh, uh, um, suction things like that. And so it, it it has to be small, it has to be portable, and easy to to bring from one bed to the other. And this is why I think those trolleys with all the equipment, the all-in-one situation, uh, is of of tremendous importance and of tremendous benefit. Um, when we look at the new 5.3 um, uh, uh, system from Storz, um, it is a it is a, a almost classic uh, uh, bronchoscope like uh, tool device, and and it fits to the to the monitors uh, that are already for several years on the market. Uh, you need for the the older ones an adapter, uh, but it's on the same screen. So nobody is running away getting another screen or another uh, monitor. It's all fitting to the same system. And uh, by using uh, the, 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 the um, number three or number two system, um, the older ones, uh, you need an adapter with the new monitor coming to the market pretty soon, the, the four series, um, uh, there is no adapter necessary anymore. So uh, it, it fits together with the uh, older monitor monitors as well with the brand new monitor, of course. Um, and the adapter is just plug it in uh, on the other end of the, uh, of the adapter, you plug in the, uh, the five um, single use and uh, it's working. The picture is 
is excellent. The handle uh, is, is pretty similar to the uh, reusable one. Um, as you can see, it's ergonomically built and uh, you have the, the, the working channel and the suction device. So it's, it's pretty the same and uh, from the ergonomic uh, positioning and from the ergonomics uh, point of view, uh, it's, it's very, 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 very convenient. Uh, the angulation um, is, is excellent. It's uh, 280 degrees and, and even to the backside, 220 degrees almost. So the, the quality of uh, the angulation is, is very, very uh, um, good, uh, as well as the stiffness, which is, which is um, uh, 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 very nice, um, especially when you, when you do um, um, awake fiber optic intubations. We, we've done several patients. I will show you a video a bit later. Um, the, the stiffness is, is, is just uh, how it should be that uh, the, the gliding of the tube is, is, is excellent. And of course, the angulation inside the laryngeal inlet. Yeah? Uh, there is a, a, a tube fixation um, a, a device on the handle as well to fix the tube if, if necessary. And um, uh, the, the working channel is um, 2, .2 millimeters on the 5.3. Um, which which is um, uh, just enough, and the length is uh, sixty five centimeters, just as as the three point five, who is already who's, who has already been introduced in the market like one and a half hours uh, uh, years ago. So the working channel is bigger. The suctioning is is excellent, which is probably the most important thing when you are using it on the ICU. That the suctioning is good and uh, that's very light uh, the system and uh, yeah the angulation of the of the the tip is just brilliant uh, and uh, uh, very very uh, helpful especially when you do uh, suctioning and bronchoscopy in, in the intensive care situation. Well, I'm stuck now. Oops. Okay. Um, as you can see, uh, the, the angulation backwards and forwards, as I already mentioned, um, uh, and the stiffness is, is uh, very, very beneficial. Um, if we look at the, the, uh, the image, and uh, this is just a, a picture, um, uh, you can see that the resolution of the chip is equal to the reusable one. So the quality of the picture, the quality of the, the resolution is, is, is very, very high and you will not see any difference to any uh, of the reusable uh, fives uh, provided by stores. So there's no resolution difference and quality of the picture between reusable and single use device. This is a video uh, with an awake fiber optic intubation using the single use five. And uh, as you can see, the quality of the picture, there is the automatic light changing as well. We're going through the vocal cords now and you, you see the vessels and the structures of the trachea. Very, very nice. The pars membranacea, as you can see, is flowing down like a glacier. And uh, the quality of the image uh, is, is, is excellent. So this is what we actually want in, in, in those situations, uh, especially for, for critical patients in the intensive care, uh, that we have good suction, we have a good picture, and uh, uh, the, this is what the, the system provides, uh, which I think is important uh, for single-use devices, that there is no difference to, uh, in terms of image and handling of the, the device um, compared to a reusable system. When we look at the indications uh, for, for um, uh, flexible scopes in the intensive care, um, especially aspiration, infection, and uh, uh, atelectasis are those things where we need inspection, we want to collect sampling, and we do therapeutic interventions. This is like suctioning, and therefore the suctioning is, is again with the two millimeter channel from the 5.3. Uh, single-use device five uh, is 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 a big working channel where we can we can go through and uh, do some some collecting as well, uh, uh, but the suctioning uh, function is important and this is what is absolutely given by this system. 
The second thing is, of course, error management, which is mainly in the operation room, but also on, on, in the ICU in terms of when we, are, we, we lose the, the tube or the airway in those kind of situations. Um, and uh, for airway accessions, especially again, when, when after burn trauma, so we have something for inspection and therapeutic uh, interventions as well. So the indications are, uh, uh, are given. Um, and of course, uh, when we look in the intensive care, the incidences of percutaneous tracheostomies uh, have dramatically risen over the last uh, 20 years. Uh, like in 1996, less than 5% of the tracheostomies have been done uh, percutaneously. Nowadays, we are, we are doing about 95% uh, of those interventions um, or with um, uh, percutaneous tracheostomy and, and, and bronchoscopy uh, in those cases is, is essential. And uh, therefore, the, the amount of equipment needed, especially if I look in my intensive care, we are, have, we, we are providing currently like eight or nine um, bronchoscopes um, uh, for, for those interventions, for those uh, um, therapeutic and uh, suctioning um, uh, interventions. So it's, it's, it, there is a lot uh, of need for those, especially in the modern treatment of uh, ventilated patients and for uh, those interventions like tracheostomies. Um, so it is important to have those devices available. And on the other hand, it is important uh, um, to provide like the, the single use devices as well due to national regulations. As I already mentioned, if we have a, a patient with the Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease or the suspicious um, uh, contamination of prions, uh, we are not allowed to to um, use those devices again. Uh, so we cannot use in those suspicious cases, reusable products. This is why we need uh, single use devices. If you have inappropriate on-site sterilization, which, which is possible, like we are having two smaller hospitals in our hospital groups, and we do not run 24 seven uh, sterilization there. So in cases on, on their, those intensive cares, uh, we, we have to do more than one or two uh, bronchoscopies or, or uh, interventions, then we are running out of equipment. And uh, therefore it is important as a backup to have those single use devices. Uh, especially if you have low incidences of uses, uh, then you have to re-sterilize those products and uh, uh, this is why the, the single-use devices are uh, really helpful. Uh, also, as I mentioned, as a backup system, when you run out of reach <coughs> of um, the infectious patients I already mentioned, and in remote areas, of course, this is a system which, uh, again, uh, you, 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 you have with the small monitor, uh, you can carry it easily uh, around, and uh, therefore, it is, it is beneficial uh, uh, because there is no, uh, again, uh, uh, sterilization uh, possibilities over there. Uh, the indications, I guess, is something uh, which, which everyone is aware of. Uh, awake fiber optic intubation, uh, bronchial cleaning, suctioning, tracheostomy. The, the checking of double lumen tubes, uh, especially the, the smaller devices, the, the uh, four point uh, is two um, or the, the three uh, millimeter devices. Positioning check of the LMA is something uh, I, I always uh, do when, when we figure out that there are uh, problems uh, with these devices. And uh, of course, um, mm -hmm. in the intensive care, which is uh, done uh, pretty often mm -hmm. after uh, laryngeal trauma and uh, long-term intubation, um, uh, the laryngeal swelling before we do the uh, extubation to check the situation about the laryngeal uh, swelling in the area that we can provide a safe extubation for, the, for those patients and not run into trouble to, to, to be unable to do a reintubation due to laryngeal swellings. Yeah? What are the limitations of the five single use? Well, uh, of course, uh, when we look about our environment, the production of technical waste, um, this is something we, 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 we have to focus on. Um, uh, and probably teaching and training may be more expensive. And everybody will think twice to use a single use device for, for any teaching purposes. This is why it is important to really figure out and, and to have the possibility in that situation 
uh, one monitor, reusable and single-use devices. And obviously the question, of course, nowadays is, does it make economically sense? And I think there is a balance for this. Absolutely, it makes economically sense, but uh, we clearly have to um, keep in mind uh, which is the situation we are dealing with. Um, why why uh, reusable uh, systems? Well, probably it's co less cost intensive uh, if people don't break it too early. That's the thing. Uh, when it's carefully and gently used, uh, the, the, the reusable stuff is probably the best you can spend, um, uh, but you need appropriate sterilization available. Uh, there is a lot of on-site teaching possible, uh, and there is a lot of uh, um, training possible. And this is, I think, one of the big, big advantages, which I'm always focusing on as head of department and medical director, that the team, the whole team is properly uh, educated continuously because the manual skills are so important. And this is what you can, can easily provide in a lot of cases every day uh, when you have reusable stuff. Yeah? And you, uh, you uh, pro uh, um, produce less uh, uh, technical waste. Nevertheless, uh, we, we have to consider that it makes sense to, to use um, uh, both systems. And this is why we do this in my department. We predominantly use the reusable stuff, yeah? uh, but we, we use for specific cases, especially in infectious situation, uh, um, the single-use devices. And as I already mentioned, we are running two smaller hospitals and the cleaning and sterilization facilities there are only temporarily open. And this is why uh, we, we need uh, single-use devices there to, to maintain, maintain proper treatment for those patients even if there is less incidence of the use there. Uh, but over weekends or holidays, you know, we don't have any sterilization possibilities. And this is why we have to provide single use to keep up the high level of uh, treatment for our patients up. Uh, so it's an excellent backup system. It's an excellent system in, in smaller institutions with uh, um, less cleaning and sterilization possibilities. And the quality of the image, the quality of the handling of the single-use device is just equal to the reusable one. So uh, especially uh, make up your mind in terms of uh, your facilities, of your possibilities um, and your, your, your patients, and uh, then you will find a good balance. Yeah? Uh, why the storage system in my department? It's pretty easy. Um, I always compare it when there is a problem in, 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 an, in an airplane, you would not like that the captain is running back to, to get things uh, uh, collected from the back of the plane uh, to, to, to fix the problem. And this is why I want one monitor and all the devices along with that monitor. So if we have one trolley, this trolley contains of everything I need in terms of video laryngoscope, of rigid bronchoscopes, of flexible scopes, single use and reusable devices, because I need the, the quality of every airway device on one monitor. I need a good image, I need good suctioning, it should be easy handling. And of course, which is also in terms of teaching and training important that we can record the things that we can use it as training and teaching devices as well. And this is why I, I try to figure out and, and to, to, to implement in my department that they film and they record every intervention they do. Because from mishappenings, you can learn a lot again. And, and if things are running good, it's also good. So I want all in one, as I said, with the video laryngoscopes, with rigid scopes and flexible scopes. And this is what is provided by this system. Um, the storage uh, five system makes economically sense um, and the, the quality, as I already mentioned, is something I'm, I'm really fond of. The smally is troll with uh, uh, the trolley is very small, which is important for ICU and ORs. We always know that there is lack of space and it's hard to get around uh, the beds and, and all everything is narrow. So we can't use big, big, huge trolleys. Yeah, we, we just need small trolleys that are easy to handle and easy to use. And as I already mentioned, I want to record the things. By that, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. And uh, I'm open and uh, 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 happy 
uh, to answer some questions. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Yeah, hello. Yes, yeah, nice to meet you, sir. So what is, I can see you. You can see me? Okay, okay, okay. So uh, the hard body, <coughs> difficulty of the fiber-body, away fiber-body intubation and we use uh, uh, rigid scope. The rigid scope? Yeah. Um, uh, well, you, uh, when you do a, a, a wake fiber optic intubation with the Bonfils or with the, the CMAC VS, um, the, the, main, the most important thing is uh, to do the proper preparation of the patient. This is the topicalization, uh, which is really important. And uh, um, with the vaporizer that you at least uh, um, uh, keep the patient like for around 10 minutes breathing lignocaine, uh, into the, uh, and then you know to do the topicalization with, again yeah. with uh, lignocaine uh, and really do it properly that you really touch the pharyngeal area at the back and then when people are not gargling anymore then you start the intubation so you can use it um, the gold standard actually for awake fiber optic intubation is the flexible uh, way but you can use the the rigid as well again the most important thing is the proper preparation of the patient. Uh, if you use like some sedatives again, again uh, along with it, like dexmedetomidine or some remifentanil low dose infusion, this is possible. In general, I do not recommend this primarily. I say if we go, do a good vaporization and topicalization, this is what is actually more beneficial and safer for the patient. So, what uh, how about uh, the uh, the uh, block? Um, How the in a wake fiber optic intubation, sir? Uh, we we do actually not provide any of those uh, blocks anymore. The thing is, um, you if you are experienced on that, um, you can do it. This is a way. I I you know I I never pretend that the way we do it is the only way and the best way and the gold way, the gold standard. I I I've over the years, you know, I've done a lot of studies and publications about sedation with uh, awake fiber optic intubation and things like that. Uh, and to be honest, you know, the yeah. older I get and the more uh, uh, youngsters I'm teaching and training, the more I focus on good uh, topicalization and on vaporization of the patient, uh, just on, on uh, and, and nothing else. Because when you do some regional box and, and these people are like regurgitating, you know, that the, the uh, the, the protection of aspiration is, is dramatically reduced. Nevertheless, if you are experienced in that and you are uh, you have good skills, manual skills in, in performing the intubation, this is one way. But we do not do it in my department. And I, I do not think that uh, in, in, in a lot of parts in, in, in Europe, this is, this is performed anymore. Nevertheless, I do not blame anyone who is doing blocks there. Yes. Thank you so much. I am a young anesthesiologist from Myanmar. I had three or more experience just fiber hot intubation. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. We have a question in the chat. Um, yes. I, I just read it. Could you please share your experience with using video laryngoscope guided flexible bronchoscope intubation? Um, I, 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 again, you, you can do this. Um, nevertheless, um, the thing is when, when, when you insert the, uh, the video laryngoscope, yeah, the patient will react to that, yeah. Except the the the, the patient is, is 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 well topicalized, yeah. And if a patient is well topicalized, uh, there is actually, from my point of view, no need to have a video laryngoscope guided flexible intubation. What we do in my department is that we train flexible 
intubation in asleep patients. We are having one operation room every day where we perform asleep fiber optic intubation. So we induce the patient, we paralyze the patient, the patient is proper, pre-oxygenated, and then we do the oral flexible intubation. And this is what people should start training. There is enough time because these people are proper pre-oxygenated, these are not critical patients, they don't have difficult airways. And that, this is when the people learn the manual skills, that they train the manual skills. And I think uh, for, for a, a video laryngoscope guided flexible intubation, you need a second person who is holding the, the flexible scope because otherwise with one hand or with second hand to, to push it in, you can't do a flexible intubation. So the point is, uh, I, I do not recommend this kind of combination because I think uh, if, if, if uh, you train it properly, and of course you have a second hand who is doing a jaw thrust, put the, yeah, a jaw thrust, then uh, you, you teach and train the manual skills, and this makes it much easier, because in a, in a difficult situation, you will always go uh, use the nasal way, uh, which, is, which is flatter from, from coming up again from the pharyngeal area. And uh, so this is what I uh, recommend, that you really try to do training in asleep patients and then don't uh, do the combination of a video laryngoscope. So the questions in the chat were already answered. Um, are there any more live questions? Do, does anyone want to raise their hand and uh, take the chance now to directly ask Professor Pyrrhinger? If not, um, thank you very much again for giving us this wonderful insight and the uh, presentation about the, the 5S 5.3 um, for sharing your experience. And uh, thank you everyone for joining this meeting. Of course, if you have later on some questions, please feel free to directly contact us um, on the booth. Or if you directly have questions to Professor Puringer, of course, we will forward them to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind attendance. Thank you, Mark, for the uh, kind invitation to participate in this symposium.